Ed here with the Digital Digest, and today I wanted to share a quick unboxing and first look at the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3090 Ti. This GPU launched roughly one month ago at the end of March 2022 with a suggested retail price of $1,999 US dollars. And I just purchased one. Well, actually, it was roughly one week ago. I'll include a link in the description. These are available, and that might be the best part about it. Now, don't get me wrong, the performance is amazing. It's the best on Earth right now, especially if you're looking for a hybrid GPU that can do both, meaning not just gaming, but any form of content creation, deep learning. I mean, this is something that knocks most uh, quadro options clear off the block, and that's what makes it so unique. However, it's only 5 to 10% more performance than you will get out of the 3090 that precedes it. So, where does that leave you, you might ask? Why would you want to consider this for $500 more than the 3090? Well, let's talk about availability. Good luck finding a 3090, and that's where I would start first. So if, like me, you're after performance in that class, you will not find a 3090. But you will be able to find one of these ridiculously large, ridiculously powerful GPUs here in 2022. And the next thing you might say is, well, what about a 3080 Ti? Well, at $1,200, definitely a value-oriented GPU. Granted, it's very expensive, but when you think of overall performance, however, those are sold out as well. And then when you step down to the 3080, I feel like you're dropping into another class. There's nothing wrong with the 3080. The 3080 really will address, I feel like, you know, 99% of the gamers out there and probably be more than they need. And by the way, the packaging on this is excellent. Um, I'm still talking, but this GPU is just a piece of art. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, I've watched NVIDIA grow over the years. Uh, now for over 20, I think I started following them in the late 90s um, when I was also, you know, in love with 3DFX. Um, and, you know, ATI had its place too, but of course, it's in a much better place now. And to see NVIDIA come this far is amazing. Of course, again, this card makes no sense at its price for its performance in the context of the other GPUs that NVIDIA makes, but availability, the fact that a 3090 right now, if you want a Founders Edition especially, is going to be marked up to about the same price as this, you certainly wouldn't consider it. However, from a power standpoint, we're getting a preview of what is to come. So this GPU, if I can even pull it out of this package, and this weighs about five pounds, this monster. I'm going to put this aside. We'll come back to the, the packaging. 450 watts is uh, the draw on this card now. That is up from the 350, uh, the 3090, so a 100-watt jump. And this is part of the reason NVIDIA is calling this a Titan class card, or a BF GPU, which you can speculate what that stands for. I know what NVIDIA says it stands for. I have a different theory. But, um, you know, a big, you know what, GPU. But the point here is, is that we are getting a bit of a look into the future. And for anyone during this video that was thinking, well, why not just wait until the end of this year, you know, fourth quarter, for the announcement of the new generation, you know, the 4000 series, presumably, that's always good in theory. And look, NVIDIA's come an incredibly long way from, you know, the 20 plus years that I've followed them. But one thing is certain, even though the shortage uh, in the GPU realm market is not the same today as it was uh, at the beginning of the pandemic, and we're not going through the mining craze that we were through the pandemic, I still don't have great confidence that it's going to be very easy to get one of those 4,000 series GPUs at the end of the year, possibly into the first or second quarter of next year. So again, if you want the best of the best, that will likely be for roughly a year in terms of availability, not in terms of existence. That's what the 3090 Ti represents. And with that new power threshold, we're getting a really solid look at what is to come. Now, the minimum power supply recommended by NVIDIA is 850 watts. I've covered uh, from HP uh, pre-built with 3090s that had 650 watt power supplies. 
So I'm probably going to have to do a brand new build for this 3090 Ti, and frankly, doing anything less wouldn't do it justice. Um, I game strictly in 4K, I have for years. This is probably the first GPU that's really going to deliver on that. And that's not to say the 3090 can't, it can. You can achieve 60 frames in most titles uh, at Ultra, but this is going to give me just a little more headroom. And again, with the faster clock speed, more CUDA cores, granted it's like 256 more, you are getting the best of everything. And it kind of reminds me, the size of this thing, of the Titan Z. I mean, four slots, generally speaking, for these cards. This one is looking like three. Um, and this is mounted on there well. We've got, I don't want to damage this, um, but we've got, as you may have already noticed, um, essentially one HDMI 2.1 and then display port across uh, the, the entire row there. Uh, ventilation, the air, the hot air that this card is producing will come directly out of the back of the case. I think from a design standpoint, that's brilliant. Um, and you've got, you know, two fans total uh, doing exactly what they should. And from a design perspective, the Founders Edition, uh, in my opinion, is always the nicer uh, version. Granted, you'll lose a little performance going with the Founders Edition as opposed to uh, the overclockable GPUs that you'll get from partners. But I've always preferred uh, these to the alternative because the performance difference, fairly minimal. Um, and of course... I'd rather have the product per, you know, NVIDIA's design spec. That's not a knock at any other manufacturer. I mean, those cards are great, but they all generally look like toys. Now, on the power side, and the reason I've stated this is a look into the future for us, is that not only is this, as mentioned, much more power hungry uh, than the 3090 that it builds upon. I keep saying that instead of succeeds, but it really does kind of succeed it because you can't get a 3090, Founders Edition. Uh, is that we have now, instead of two 8-pin connectors, we have a 12-pin. Technically a 16-pin, give you a close-up of that. And what this means is that we are going to all have hideous power connectors next-gen. Uh, so the 4000 series cards are obviously going to lean into this same approach. I don't think that it's going to be very different. Uh, and we're all going to need much more power on the supply side, but then when it comes to the included cables, let's take a look. It should be right here in this adorable little package. We've got what should be our 16 uh, to, three, well, really 12, but we can call it 16 to what will be eight, or at least I think it's gonna be in here, and there it is, three eight pin connectors. Let me go ahead and pull that out without damaging anything. Now the run on this cable is pretty short. And that's one thing I wish NVIDIA would have looked at a little bit differently in this situation. Uh, this is a gigantic card, incredibly powerful, uh, but we now have three of these. And just to give perspective on the power consumption here, I, with my custom build, have been able to upgrade GPUs because I was a Titan user, what is it now, in 2015, 2016, that meant with an 850 watt supply and cycling parts, my power supply and GPU could always upgrade, or rather, I wouldn't have a problem upgrading GPUs until now. So that's what we're looking at here. So for the first time since 2017, my power supply is, which is 800, it's a Corsair uh, 850 watt supply, looks like it's not, it not looks like, it's not enough. I'm going to need more headroom, especially if I go with 12th gen or eventually implement a 13th gen CPU here from Intel. Uh, so it's just one of those things where be prepared for next gen. So well, that's another thing. Everybody's talking about waiting. This is going to be in your future. This little octopus tentacle is coming and you are going to need more power. That is really clear. Uh, and it's not going to be pretty, because as you see, when this actually connects, it's sitting on the front of your card, and not the front, but of course, if this is mounted like that, now it's the front, right? And without breaking one of the fans here, this is going to be uh, plugged in right there, make sure I have the orientation proper, um, but it would be like this. And so that's going to be sitting there, and you're going to wire this down, 
it's going to be kind of ugly in spite of how much I was just bragging about the overall aesthetic of uh, the Founders Edition cards are. But it's just something to be aware of. So um, I'm thinking at least 1,000 watts. I've been looking at some 1,600-watt EVGA supplies, which are overkill. That's mostly what miners use. But, you know, with a GPU like this, it might be warranted. And then you've got the SLI bridge uh, right here. I'm not even going to pop it off. That is not something that I personally will be doing. I don't think we have anything else in the box. I mean, really what this amounts to, again, is just best-in-class raw performance. And then for those of you that actually want to use this for uh, you know any sort of creative endeavor, you've got the best in the business. I mean, that is why I think this GPU should be a little bit more popular, you know, and I'm it's I'm kind of joking because, you know, at $2,000, it's totally ridiculous, like I said at the top of the video. But as we go through whatever changes are going forward um, with the pandemic, uh, many of you may think it's done. But if you look at China right now, and this is not, I'm not trying to worry anybody, let's just be realistic. There are shutdowns in play right now. Uh, and, you know, most of these components made in China uh, partners in Taiwan, if these shutdowns continue, you know, things are not going to be loose. There there aren't going to be as many GPUs out there. And then in addition to that, by the way, cool that this got its own quick start guide because that didn't need to happen. Um, but in addition to that, you're also, you know, we're facing uh, an economy, an economic position now that is not going to help anything. So there are a lot of factors playing into this that could potentially equate to as I just lose a piece of paper, that could equate to this GPU hanging on to its title longer than expected for most users just because of the uh, inability, if you will, to acquire what I presume will be uh, any upper tier GPU from the 4000 series. So I'm not saying you're going to have trouble getting a 4090, although I do think those are going to sell out if that's what they're called. I think all of them will sell out. But, you know, historically the 7 or 8 series is going to knock off um, the 90. But because this is a TI, expect I'm expecting it's going to be the 8 series. So if the 4080 outperforms this at half the price, that's what we're probably going to be looking at. But then again, um, pricing going up, inflation, um, possibly a global recession that we've already entered that will get worse. I'm not going to give you economic forecasts, but this all equates to this equipment getting more expensive, not less expensive. And I'm not saying I'm getting ahead of the curve, but I think to decide now that just because manufacturing is much better here in 2022 than it was in 2020, 2021, you're getting ahead of yourself to decide that things are going to be available and easy to attain and that pricing is going to be solid as well. Remember, 3090s are still selling for over $2,000. Of course, peak pandemic, they were 3000 So food for thought. Uh, this looks like a bargain compared to pandemic pricing uh, with the shortage over the last two years. Uh, but it doesn't look like a bargain now that we're seeing more availability. But if that tightens again, I'm going to be very glad I bought this, that's for sure. At present, though, I know it's not worth two grand. You all should know that as well, not just from me, but anyone that covers this. But will I really end up being unhappy with this? I don't think so. Uh, so again... Uh, photo, video editing, this is going to completely chew up and spit out anything you're doing. If you're working in DaVinci Resolve, this is going to be ideal. Adobe Premiere, it doesn't matter. This thing with the, you know, having, again, the faster RAM uh, reconfigured, 24 gigs, uh, that higher clock speed, it's just going to tear everything apart. And then if you want a game like me, occasionally, um, I game, you know, I do. Anyone that follows my channel knows that. Well, then how am I going to beat this? Now, it's just a matter of what I'm going to put together in the build. Um, I had a, a system here that I was tempted to use, but I just don't think it's worth trying to retrofit a new GPU in there. I feel like I should just get all the pro, uh, performance out of this. And by the way, people wondering whether or not it's worth buying this for gaming. I mean, I kind of made that clear, I feel like, at the top of the video. But just to reiterate... This is really only ideal for 4K Ultra all the time when it comes to gaming, which you can nearly pull off already with the 3090. You can get close with a 3080 Ti. A 3080, eh, you know, not going to be 60 across all games. And by the way, it's not going to be 60 across all of them, but the majority you're going to get really close. 
Uh, with this, I anticipate that, you know, nothing is going to hold me back, especially if you don't have a bottleneck at CPU. So if you're wondering what gen CPU is ideal for this, the 12th gen is. Now, can you use something like a 10th gen Core i9 from a couple of years ago? Sure you can. There's nothing wrong with that. It'll still be phenomenal, but there are some discrepancies uh, with performance on this GPU, specifically when paired uh, with lower resolution gaming. So be aware of that bizarre, but one of those things that uh, I've read that if you do not have a 12th gen Intel uh, i9, i7 paired with this, and you are gaming at, you know, 1440p, which I don't know why you would be, and own one of these. But if you do that, you could actually see uh, lower performance than some of the other GPUs I've been talking about that, of course, are much less expensive, take much less power, and that's really just an optimization issue. Uh, if you want to see this not bottlenecked in any way, then that is going to, right now, as far as I know, rely on having a latest gen CPU from Intel or AMD. I mean, I'm not including AMD because I personally will likely still stick with Intel, even though AMD is doing amazing things right now. Just game-changing stuff, especially from an efficiency standpoint. But yeah, we'll see what I end up going with. I mean, the 12,900KS is looking tasty. A little too expensive at, even though it's also only about a month in change old, I'd like to see that discounted. That's another thing, kind of like 3090Ti, where it isn't going to give us that much more, uh, you know, than the processor one step below it for a couple hundred less. But it is the fastest CPU on Earth right now. Any questions or comments, please feel free to post them. Again, a five-pound monster that... Could change the way you work. But any questions or comments, please feel free to post them. Hit that like button. And as usual, please feel free to subscribe. And please stay safe. Later.